So hello and welcome to lesson 3 in our study of functional analysis. So here we'll be discussing vector spaces, okay? So vector spaces. So um, someone will ask, what is a vector space? Mm, so I can answer that a vector space is a space of vectors, right? Okay, so yeah, I can say that. So it's a space containing vectors. But that's not the formal definition. So I hope you remember what vectors are. So we said vectors are quantities with magnitude and direction, right? Now how do we combine this and define what a vector space is? So that's what this video is about. So we are coming to define what vector spaces are, okay? So before we define what a vector space is, we walk through some properties that we are all familiar with. So you know, vector addition associates with every ordered pair x, y of vectors. A vector x plus y is called the sum of x and y in such a way that the following property holds. Okay, so, um, you know, vector addition is closed. When you say the vector addition is closed, what it means is that when you add two vectors, let's say vector x and vector y, the resulting that you get should always be in your words. We should always be a vector in that space that you are defining it in, okay? Then, vector addition is commutative, okay? So that means that when you add two vectors, Either vector x plus vector y, it is the same as vector y plus x. Then vector addition is associative, right? So vector x plus, and this thing should be underscore instead, like this should be instead of coming up, okay? So when you have three vectors, x, y and z okay you can see that the associativity rules so vector addition is associative then every vector has a zero vector such that all vectors for all vectors we have right x plus zero equals x okay so every vector has a vector that when you add into that vector you still get that same vector that is called a zero vector okay then every vector also has a negative vector such that for all vectors we have right so when you add that vector to its negative you get zero and vectors can be scaled and the scaling must be compatible okay so that means we can uh, we talk we are talking about the multiplicative sc scalers okay so we can multiply vectors by scalars and what we mean by the scaling must be compatible is that if you are in the for instance the space of real numbers right when we scale the vector we shouldn't leave uh, we shouldn't leave the, that space of real numbers if the scaling what we scale by it makes us leave that um space then we say that it is incompatible okay so for instance let's say if i have a vector one two and i'm in a space of integers and i decide to scale it by let's say root two so i multiply it by root two I'm going to get root 2 and 2 root 2. And you can see now, what I'm getting here is not an integer. They are not in that space. They are in the, um, these are irrational numbers. So you can say they are in the arrow space, okay? So you can see that with this scaling I did, it wasn't compatible, okay? So that's what we mean, we mean by when we are scaling vectors, it should be compatible, okay? So properties two and three can help us to say that the vector space is an additive abelian group. Okay, so um, these properties, properties two and three, can help us to make that point that vector space is an additive abelian group. Okay, and I hope you know what an abelian group is from abstract algebra groups. All right, it's a commutative group. Or addition is commutative. So now we can define, finally define a vector space as an additive abelian group with a compatible scaling operation over a field K. Okay, so 
the field can be row numbers or complex numbers so that happens to be the definition for a vector space okay so for your information a field is just a set on which addition subtraction multiplication and division except by zero are defined and behave as the corresponding operations on rational numbers and row numbers so examples of fields we have the sets of rational numbers real numbers complex numbers okay and also one thing you should notice that in a field each element has a multiplicative inverse so as a result of that the set of integers for instance is not a field because when you take two the multiplicative inverse of two is one over when you take two the multiplicative inverse of two is one over two and we can see that this one over two is not found in what um it's not an integer so the set of integers natural numbers whole numbers are all not fields okay but the set of rational numbers raw numbers complex numbers are fields so now let's look at examples of vector spaces okay so um the rn space that is the space of raw numbers okay because for every num raw number we have zero which happens to be um the origin or the zero vector then when you take two for instance it has a negative which is minus two such that two plus minus two is zero we can scale them and a whole lot of things okay then the complex space is also an example of a vector space polynomials the vector space because when we add two polynomials we always get another polynomial we can get um, we have the zero polynomial we have the negative of polynomials and polynomials addition on them they are commutative associative and the rest and you have the trivial vector space okay so the trivial vector space happens to be the smallest example of a vector space and it contains only the zero vector right so both vector addition and scalar multiplication are trivial so you know when you add zero plus zero zero times zero is zero okay so that means that just the set zero is a vector space and that's the smallest vector space we can have called the trivial vector space okay then matrices are also um matrices are also um vector spaces okay so we can take the second definition of a vector space okay so a vector space is an unempty set of objects called vectors on which are defined two operations called addition and multiplication by scalars subject to the axioms below so the axioms must hold for all vectors u v and w in x for all scalars alpha and beta okay so the reason why we define vectors in this way is that when you are being given anything to show that it's a vector space you are supposed to use the, these 10 axioms to show that okay so when you add the two vectors you should they should be in the space x so that means the vector addition should be closed the vector addition should be commutative it should be associative and there is a vector called a zero vector such that this condition holds then for each um, vector in x there is a vector called the negative of what the negative vector of u so that this condition is satisfied then when you scale the scalar multiplication should also be closed okay then we have all these things right so when these conditions are satisfied then we see that that space is a vector space so when you are giving anything to show that that thing is a vector space you're supposed to use these axioms to show that okay so if you are asked to show you something is a vector space you have to verify the axioms above for that thing as i said so now let's end our video with topological vector spaces okay so you know when you put a topology on a vector space it preserves scaling and translation okay and that is what we mostly want to do when we put a topology in a vector space okay so 
we can define a topological vector space from this concept. So a topological vector space is a vector space such that there is a topology on the space making translation and scaling continuous. So if you put a topological if you put a topology on a vector space and it makes translation and scaling continuous, that means that that vector space now becomes a topological vector space. Okay. Or in simple terms, we can say that a topological vector space is a vector space which is also a topological space. Okay. And some examples are the Banach spaces, the Hilbert spaces, and the Sublev spaces. Okay. There are some examples of topological vector spaces. So now be it on our topological spaces okay they are very very important so in our next video we'll talk about norms okay mm, see you in the next video